Hello and welcome to Web Learning, where knowledge is shared. If you missed the free demo board giveaway, I suggest you subscribe to this channel and also click on the notification bell. The free demo board giveaway is available around 48 hours after I post my videos. The best way to know when I'm posting the videos is clicking the bell and then getting the notification. Today's video is also a part of a series of the hard driver and how to use them. As always, I'm using the SM32 Cube MX. If you don't know how to use it, now is the best time to go and view this video and then come back again and continue from where you left off. So let's start with a new project. As always, I'm using Dell 053, board selector, nuclear 64, L0, L053. In today's video, I'm using the UART. So it is set as user pins, but I'll go ahead and enable it. I turned on the user 2 because those are the pins that are connected to the ST-Link CDC communication. If you go to the UM1724, that's the Nucleo 64 board, the Nucleo L053R8 is already in it. If we go to page 64, we can see that PA2 and PA3 are connected to URTX and URTRX. Back to page 63, we can see that the URTX and URTRX ST-Link RX and ST-Link TX. Moving forward to the page 65, we can see the ST-Link TX and RX are connected to the ST-Link and the ST-Link is doing UR2 CDC communication or virtual COM port communication to the PC. The best way to find out which COM port you're working with, I'm using for example Doclight. If I open, then I can see it's a COM4 ST Maker Electronics ST-Link communication. Today I'll set it 115 200 baud rate and I'll open the port. You don't have to use Doclight, you can use any other software for virtual COM port communication and any COM port communication like TerraTerm, Hercules and other softwares that are available. So setting the pins UR2 to asynchronous, I'll go to clock configuration, I can set it to 32 megahertz. I'll go to configuration, I have UART set, I'll go to parameter settings, now they are set as 115 200, so it's word length 7 bits. If I have parity to even or odd, then the word length will be 6 plus 1 bit for the parity, but this time I'll use none, so my word, word length is 7. Your maximum baud rate can be seen here what you can have. So it's between 492 bits up to 2 megabits. And that depends on the clock that you set it. One of the most interesting features in SD, in some devices, you can do TX and RX pin swapping. So this will give you swapping of the TX and RX if you built your board incorrectly. There's nothing else that we need to do here. We can click OK. We can go Project generate code, we'll give it a name, set to Kyle, only necessary files, set all three pins as analog input, and generate the code. Open, pro open project. Now for the UART to work, we need two things. One, we need the buffer to receive and send, and second, we need the actual function to send and receive. So for this first part, we'll just build the receive part. We'll go to user code begin zero. We'll add uint eight with data structure of 10. Now we'll go to our user code begin three. As always, hal, uart. Now we can do receive. This time we'll do it as spawning, not a DMA or interrupt. We need to set which uart handler it is. So uart, so uart two. This is our variable, so it's data and the size, we know it's 10 as we set it, and the timeout. This is if no data is available after this amount of time, it will finish. Okay, let's compile. Let's load it in debug. I'll set the windows, so I'll put both of them side by side. If you remember, I have it on DataBits 7, no parity, open. Before we run the code, Let's set the watch window and add data to watch. As you can see, the data is empty. Let's run the code. 
and put the breakpoint here every time we receive data. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So every time we put it in the first point. Let's stop this. Now let's add sending. Again, we need to put variable for sending. So you int net data one. So I'll give it a different name than the data. And as a start, I'll put in information from zero to nine. Always hal part. So this time it's transmit. As before, we need to tell it which UART we want to use. The data, this time it's to one. The size and the timeout 1000. Let's compile it side by side. As before, we can add data one to our watch window, remove hexadecimal display, and clear this window, run. If we change this, now we can see it's transmitting data. Still, we can send information to the keyboard and we can see all of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like subscribe and the notification so we will be notified when I load new videos and you can maybe win some new nuclear boards. Thank you.